Albertans have much to lose and little to gain, according to a new report slamming a proposed Alberta Health Act. Parkland Institute researchers are examining risks and opportunities in the act, which is still in the consultation stage. But in its current form, they claim the act would mean more for-profit health care, lower standards, and more patient responsibility. How concerned should Albertans be? Are there any benefits in the proposed act? How could potential new legislation affect your health care? With us now to help answer those questions is Diana Gibson, co-author of the report and executive director of the Parkland Institute at the University of Alberta. Welcome back to Alberta Primetime. Thank you very much. Start us off by what is the overall goal here of the government? Alberta Health Act, don't we have one? What's going on? Well, we actually have a number of different acts that govern health care in Alberta. And what the government's proposing to do is merge all those acts into one super act. So sort of like we did with the super board uh, with our legislation. Acts that we have right now are things like the Hospitals Act, the Health Care Insurance Act, the Health Care Protection Act, and the Nursing Homes Act. And these acts are important compromises that have been reached through public debate and legislative debate, uh, like the Bill 11 debate about private surgeries. So they're, they're acts that have been developed um, extensively and that govern really important parts of health care. How far along in the process are they? They, are, they haven't got an act yet. What they're doing is consulting Albertans right now, starting June 12th. Uh, and they're consulting in, in the process over the summer of developing this new act. So good time to be talking about this. You've listed uh, three top areas of concern with what they've got so far on the table. One of them is more for-profit health care. I really want to touch on more responsibility on individual patients in a moment, but starting off, the more profit often scares people. What's your concern there? Well, the issue is profit surgeries and profit delivery. Um, the healthcare system already has a lot of for-profit or private providers, um, and we have seen some for-profit for surgeries, and of course that's been in the news lately with the bank bankruptcy of the one in Calgary, their prodigal private surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and the concerns are international academic studies, so places like the New England Journal of Medicine and the American and Canadian Journals of Medicine, so peer-reviewed journals, studies have shown that for-profit hospitals and for-profit health care delivery costs in the range of 19 to 20 percent more. So 19 to 20 percent more, that's a lot. Uh, and that the, the quality is lower in that, for example, mortality rates post-surgery are higher. Um, in the nursing homes, quality of services are lower. So um, that's why we, we raised this issue within the context of this debate is if the um, reform is about expanding the role of for-profit surgeries, and then Albertans should be very concerned. Talk to me about that other top three concerns you have. And I'm talking about more emphasis on individual responsibility and the patient charter. What do you mean by that? Yeah, um, patient charters are, are, have been talked about in a lot of different places. That sounds good. It's a good idea in a lot of ways. But what the, the way that it's been proposed so far in sort of the, the online survey and in the framework document implies a lot more responsibility on individuals. And, f and this is dangerous because issues like smoking and fast food and obesity, these are public health issues. And they need to be dealt with as public policy questions with um, regulations around the, the curtailing the power of the smoking um, the tobacco industry on policy, um, you know, helping with developing better policies around health and um, fast food and, you know, dealing with addictions, dealing with addictions yeah. curtailing marketing of fast foods, curtailing their access to schools and places like that. It's not just the patient's so fault. It's not about, yeah, and so t making health care focused on individual responsibility mm -hmm. moves us away from universality, so access to everybody based on need. It moves us away from that and starts maybe move to access based on personal behavior which is a very dangerous path, and it also moves us away from talking about these as public policy questions. Right. And so you're just worried a little bit too about opening the door yeah. to that approach. Um, rounding out your top three concerns, you touched on it briefly there, a loss of protection for the public system and lower quality standards. Yeah, so merging these acts, the, the framework document that they um, uh, have Put, to, put out around what this initiative includes. It talks a lot about the Canada Health Act and it's supposed to reassure Albertans that this is going to comply with the Canada Health Act. But that shouldn't reassure Albertans because the Canada Health Act is very minimal and very sort of 
framework. It's, it doesn't govern things like how we set up and accredit our private surgeries, how they're regulated for profit surgeries. It doesn't talk about um, whether doctors are allowed to practice in both sectors. And Alberta's current legislation goes well beyond the Canada Health Act. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in, the, in, in any of the documents or, or conversations from the government so far on this initiative to say that those protections will be kept. Just very quickly, you've got another report coming, hopefully the flip side. Is yeah. there anything good in what is being drafted? Well, what we wanted to do is, it's a two-part series. The first part is the risks, and the second is the opportunities, right. because it is important to talk about health reform in Alberta, and for Albertans to engage in, in a creative conversation about yeah. what health care should be. We all like. know we need to do something. Yeah, so, um, so for Albertans to engage, and we have put um, some recommendations together on how we can improve the public system, mm -hmm. because it is cheaper and better quality than the private for-profit. So how can we improve it and expand it to cover areas? So for example, right now, Albertans pay the highest out-of-pocket costs on health care in the country. So things that aren't in the public system are costing us a lot of money right now. So having Albertans vision and talk about how we can help reduce some of those costs. When is that report coming? Just in quickly. the next few weeks. Okay, we'll look for that. Diana Gibson, Executive Director for the Parkland Institute. Thank you very much for your insight.